Pet Talk co-host, veterinarian Dr. Courtney Campbell, who has some very, very important pet safety tips for summer. Yes. And also joining us, my favorite little, uh, you know, guest on the show <laughs> oh, is this little dog, Elliot. Look at him, look at him. Oh, Dr. Courtney, yes. you know, a very serious issue in the summer is sure. pet owners leaving their pets in the car. And sometimes they think, I cracked the window, it's okay. But right. that's not true. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because, listen, cracking the window, it may not do much. And I think all of us understand that dogs and hot cars mm -hmm. don't mix. And no. there's been some really good public service announcements mm -hmm. that have been mm -hmm. yeah. pretty illustrative of how dangerous they could be. There's usually somebody in a car, they're sweating in a t-shirt and everything like that. Just imagine if you were a dog though, where you coat. couldn't sweat oh. and you were in a fur coat. I know. Now that can be really, really problematic. Like Elliot's fur coat here, that can make situations dangerous. Plus you add in the greenhouse effect, oh, the boy. car. Yeah. So I think people understand it's dangerous, but they're like, well, what if reality hits? What alternatives do I have? So number one alternative, just pre-plan. Just don't do it, right? Yes. Find a way so that you're not um, in, a, in a situation where your dog's in a hot car. Uh, second situation, um, ask the store owner. Hey, would you mind watching my dog while I go and grab something? Yeah. And then I think even all of us as total strangers, wouldn't you get some, but something from the store for somebody who says, hey, listen, I don't want my dog to overheat. Would you mind grabbing that for me? Sure, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like if you don't feel comfortable with the yeah. animal, at least you can give somebody the money to go. You know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or I've heard of people winding up all the windows, blasting the AC full blast, and then going in. Now, that's an alternative emergency, but mm. I get a little nervous about that because what if you're in the store longer yeah. than you're supposed yeah, to? Yeah. What if the air conditioner fails? So there's yeah, definitely true. four what alternatives. What if the dog yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> There you go. Or somebody <laughs> takes yeah. off, right? Exactly. Hold the remote start yeah, let's your not, yeah, let's not discuss the fact that if your keys are in the car, if the car's on, the car's on, someone can steal your car and the dog. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just now, like Orly pointed well, out. Well, just so. hold the remote starter on your hand. I've actually seen on the internet <laughs> some um, public service announcements saying that if you take a picture of the dog in a hot car with the temperature, you can break the window without facing charges. Yes. Yeah. Oh, none of that right. has been substantiated. Call local yeah. law enforcement okay. before yeah. you go All breaking right. people's um, windows. So talk to okay? me about this. Yeah, definitely. What? We live in Southern California. It's yes. spring. It's already really hot. This summer is going to be super hot. Yes. So what is too hot to exercise our dogs? Well, first, I'm glad that Elliot lives in Southern California because if it snowed, I'm afraid we'd lose Elliot in yeah. the snow, right? Yeah. So this is good that he's living in there. But what's, you know, we talked about classic heat stroke. You're talking about exertional heat stroke where you can exercise too much, right? And it could be overheating to the dog. So which days are the most dangerous? The days we all love, 80 to 85 degree weather, okay? Oh, oh, um, he, wants, he wants to make sure he's on camera. So, so I would say, here's a good rule of thumb. If the temperature and the humidity, if you total those together, if they're above 150, that's too hot. Okay. So let's say it's 75 degrees outside and 85% humidity, that's 160, that's too hot to exercise. Okay. Now obviously if it's 90 degrees and 2% no. humidity, well yeah, that's obviously. Okay. That. Right. But that would be a good rule of thumb. Let's okay. say it's 70 temperature and 70 humidity, that's 140. It's safer, All right, safer. You were, you were talking about mm. exercise exertion and heat exhaustion. Yes. Sir. I, I'm not sure I'm clear on which is which. I have seen some dogs when I'm hiking up Burning Canyon, to me, look like they're having heat exhaustion. Yes. yes. Are they just excessively panting because they're trying yes. to sweat or are they having heat exhaustion? How do you tell the difference? What, a, what an excellent question because sometimes it's tough to tell. Mm -hmm. But I will definitely say this, a dog who's experiencing heat stroke or heat exhaustion will be panting excessively, potentially vomiting, potentially collapsing, okay. potentially not wanting to move. Uh, they could be having diarrhea. I mean, they're getting sick while it's happening. But here's the problem. By the time it, you start seeing those, oh, it could no. be too late. Oh, so no. it's important to, when you see that panting, like you said, let's take a break here. Okay. Let's get some good hydration. Okay. Let's get some good alternatives to cool down. Well, speaking of hydration, yes. one of the first products you brought here could really help you out with that. Oh, this is beautiful. And I, I think it's, it's great because it's three in one. You've got a nice water bottle here where you can take a drink of. Oh. Uh-huh. You've got <laughs> this here where you can pour some of that water oh, in. Right. right? Oh, yeah. Let's see if Elliot's interested. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Oh. He's like, no. And then of course He's you have on the bottom here, Let's see, but I don't tip this over. Treats. Oh, I bet he's oh, oh, I bet he'll take some snacks. I love yeah, that. Let's see. Let's see. Down for let's me but also, <laughs> Dr. Oh, Courtney, those kind the, of treats. I, I have heard that 
You're also oh. supposed to cool, if the dog is experiencing heat exhaustion, cool the body, not necessarily give the dog water? You can absolutely give them water. The challenge is a lot of dogs don't want to drink. Mm -hmm. I see. And so That's if, they're, if they yeah, don't want to drink, then you can take that same water and just lightly oh. touch it over their head and on their neck. Mm -hmm. And then over here, we, sh we actually have a fan That's... that you can attach to their kennel. Oh. And on the bottom oh. of the kennel, we actually have a cooling mat. Yeah, this so is... <gasps> that cooling mat heals by, you know, oh. cools them by a uh, process called conduction, where it transfers heat. Dogs usually cool themselves by evaporation okay. or evaporative cooling. So you're using all the, the, those two methods, evaporative cooling with the fan and then conduction with the with the cooling mat. So right, right, such right. a great I, idea. The, the water thing that you were talking about earlier, sometimes with my dog, I'll pour water over his head. He knows it's coming. Yes. So yeah. I have to do it more gently. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't get scared. <laughs> but sunscreen, okay? I've yes. never heard of sunscreen for dogs. I use it on myself, obviously. Right. And yes. I love my little dog. He's my little fur baby. But yes. I didn't know there was sunscreen I'm for so him. glad you brought that I up. I didn't even know they needed it. They're full I of know. hair. Yeah. I know, right? Oh, but well, these dogs, trees. not every, yeah, a lot it. of these dogs, your Bichon Frise, West Highland White yeah. Terriers, American Bulldogs are light oh, colored sure. breeds. Yeah, sure. And the dogs can get skin bulldogs. cancer from the sun just like people can. We call it solar induced uh, hemangiosarcoma or solar induced squamous cell carcinoma. So these are just, just to name a few cancers that dogs can get from the sun. So yeah. always use a veterinary approved sunscreen. This one here is labeled for dogs and horses, um, but you, two things in there, zinc oxide and the salicates, they can be dangerous. So if you see a sunscreen that has zinc oxide, hold up, call your vet and say, hey, listen, I'd like to use a sunscreen. Is mm -hmm. this okay for my pet? Go ahead, spray it on your fingers, right? And then touch it to the light the light colored areas on them. Like the right? ears, the nose, the ears, the, the nose? nose, the underbelly here. Don't just spray it in their face like, you know, it's pepper spray. Right. Yeah. Can you use human grade yeah. uh, sunscreen? Excellent question. If you pick up the human grade sunscreen and you see zinc oxide or something that ends in the word salicate, pause because salicate, toxic to cats, zinc oxide, toxic to dogs and cats. So you wow. definitely want to say, uh, this is not, not for me. A lot of people are, are out of love spraying their pets with um, insecticide like things with DEET in it. Right. DEET. DEET can be toxic to pets. So if oh you're trying goodness. to protect your pet from the sun, make sure there's no zinc, zinc oxide. If you're trying to protect them against insects, make sure there's no DEET in there. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. That's, thank you so much, oh, Dr. Courtney. So you were so awesome. And thank Ellie. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And guys, up next, we are sitting down with the host of Upscale with Prentice Penny. Come on back. Aww.